Good morning. Today we are going to continue chapter 3, which was concerned about population. Today's lecture is about Malt's theory. He was concerned about the increasing rate of and growth rate of population from one side and from the other side is food increasing. So food is increasing with a, a stable way or a fixed increasing way which is called arithmetic progression it means food is increasing one two three four stable way of increasing but what is the problem the problem is population is increasing also but with a doubling way of increasing geometric progression it means population is doubling one two four eight six this is the assumption of uh, multi steel so he know uh, or he produced that we have a scenario of catastrophic end. This catastrophic end means that people are accumulating more than the accumulation of their food. So they have two choices. One is called preventive checks. They, these are voluntary actions that people may take to decrease the rate of increasing in their growth rate. If they do not use it voluntary, they will have a catastrophic end or a crisis which is people will uh, make wars, they could make um, disasters, they could make um, uh, diseases, things that will um, make it uh, obligatory to decrease the population growth rate. So he transferred or translated his assumption into graph as we used to do in our economic studies. So population with the right, um, with, with, the, with, the, with the red, with the red curve, is increasing with uh, an increasing rate. But what about resources? It's increasing with a stable growth rate. So here we have a point of crisis. After this point, we will have two choices, even if it's voluntary or obligatory. Voluntary, we should keep. Uh, growth rate low by our decision if we do not take this action it will be an obligatory we would have a crisis wars and diseases and decrease the lifespan of um, population then we move to Marx theory Marx he blamed the uh, economic system economic system of capitalism system he said that overpopulation will make a pool of labor force so we will have a surplus of labor supply uh, what about demand for this labor it's not enough so we will have a percentage of people which is very uh, small percentage they are the elite they are the capitalists they are the landlords who control the resources of the economy and we have large pool of population which are working for these elites so after a while because of low wages insufficient uh, wages inefficient production would, would happen and some uh, problems will, ha will be happening in this society by struggling and making wars or revolution in, um, against the elite so this is the theory of Marx because of overpopulation. So thus for Marx, high levels of population growth were not the cause of poverty. What is the cause of poverty? Marx believed that the capitalist system was an just economic system that profited at the expense and exploitation of who are labored in it. And by keeping its workers poor also caused high rates of population growth. His answer was revolution, replacing capitalism with what he believed was more just uh, economic system. From his point of view, it was a socialist system. Let's move to chapter 4, uh, which is uh, covering the natural economic resources. Let's define the meaning of agricultural economics. It's an applied field of economics concerned with as any sector in economic or any field of economics it's concerned about what is the optimization of production and distribution of goods and services. So the same as uh, in agricultural economics, it's uh, concerned about optimizing production and distribution of what? Of food and fiber. What are the efforts to control prices and production? We have to um, take a role 
that uh, production in, uh, in uh, agricultural sector is unstable. It's unstable because we are forced uh, to environmental checks. So we may have some pests, we may have some um, uh, crises um, like wars, revolutions or anything that damage my production or even um, weather or rains or frosts. These things may control the output of agricultural sector. So as long as it affects uh, agricultural sector products, it will affect their prices. So the problems in agricultural sector is instability of prices. The instability of farm prices results from several factors. One is the relative slowness with which farmers are able to respond to changes in the demand for their products. Farmers generally must produce on the basis of expectations. And if their, if their expectations turn to be wrong, what would happen? What is the result? Surpluses or shortages cannot be corrected under the beginning of the next cycle. Number two, as long as we have instability in prices, prices will be reflected on income. So we will have instability of income because of instability of prices. Gross income from agriculture generally doesn't vary as much as do individual farm prices. Net income may vary more than prices. Why? Because two factors. One, that farmers already have done or already have paid the cost of um, cultivating fertilizers, machines, and labor. So if there is any change in the output prices, I won't be able or farmers will not, will not be able to change the cost. They already have burdened it. So it's like a fixed uh, cost. Number two, they are less educated. As long as human capital is not w well educated, he, would not, he won't be able to face obstacles to make output and income maximum. Number three, government intervention. As long as the government intervened to make prices stable for farmers, to make their income or wages stable, why to encourage them to keep on working in this sector? Because it's a very important sector, a primary sector. So sometimes they make tariffs, levies, uh, quotas, subsidies, um, and this is good for farmers. But from the other side, sometimes farmers lean to to toward these subsidies. They do not uh, encourage themselves to best and efficient production. That's what. Uh, makes uh, this government intervention a bad, um, a bad side, not a good side. What factors affect agricultural productivity? As we said before, weather, it's unexpected weather. Sometimes we have floods, sometimes we have uh, rainy season or um, frosts or um, any uh, harmful um, uh, chucks in environment uh, or in weather. Number two, the capacity of a given farm is also an important factor. Soil cannot be forced to produce beyond capacity. We have to keep in our mind the capacity of uh, production for soil. So we do not force soil to be over production over their capacity because you are going to ruin your production in the future. So uh, you have to put your eyes on the next generation and what are uh, the, w the methods to keep uh, farmers and agricultural land uh, safe for tomorrow. Pests can be another concern. In addition to spoiling crops, pests can also uh, sig significantly um, add to your production cost or uh, the prices or the reward of your agricultural crops. So you have to put in, in your mind three ways or three um, means that affects agricultural productivity weather and then the soil or the capacity of soil production number three pests thank you see you next lecture